Hi, thanks um, for listening in today. Uh, this is 40 time dot space um, comics in the fourth dimension. Thank you, ICAF, for inviting me to speak. I'm really excited for our panel discussion this January. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to give you a little overview of what my project is all about. So, who am I? My name is Elk Powell. I'm a trans comics artist, and I use he, him, his pronouns. I just graduated last year with a master's degree from the Visual and Critical Studies program at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. And what is 40time.space, you might be wondering? Um, well, first off, it's a website. So 40time.space is the URL. You can type that in on your phone or on your laptop, tablet, whatever. You can go look at it live online right now. Um, it is also a work of philosophy, an autobiographical comic. It was my master's thesis, and it's fun to read. So the full title is 40 Time Dot Space Comics in the Fourth Dimension, and it's basically a webcomic exploring four-dimensionalism through comics formalism, which I'm sure you're all very excited about. So you might be wondering, what is four-dimensionalism? In four-dimensionalism, which is also known as block universe theory, which I use interchangeably throughout, we think of the universe as a four-dimensional block of space-time. Any and all events, past, present, and future, and all matter exist in one unmoving four-dimensional chunk, which you can see in the top part of that image. Now on the bottom, you can see that the now is really just a single slice of time in the block universe, and that every moment can be sliced up. But technically, it's all a part of the same block, which contains everything in the universe. Now, what are comics? I'm sure you guys already have your own definitions and ideas about that. Um, this diagram here is also taken from the comic and probably looks super obscure and makes no sense, um, at least out of context here. So one of the reasons why I made this, this comic is to talk about the nature of comics and what they can do and how their reading can be informed by four-dimensionalist thought and how comics can be seen as an expression of four-dimensionalism. So don't get caught up in what the text is on there. I just wanted to give you a little preview because we'll be going into that in detail later. And I just wanted to give you a little taste. All right, so the homepage of my website um, basically contains these nine modules. They can be read in pretty much any order, although most of the time you can start with um, this one here on the left and it'll take you through linearly. There's like a little next button that you can press at the end of each comic if you want to just read them in order. So what I'm going to do is basically go through each little chapter, if you want to call them that, um, and just give you a little um, overview about basically what my argument is for each section. And then once that's over, I'll give you just a, I'll give you a little look at the website and scroll through it a little so you can get an idea of what it actually looks like. Um, the fourth dimension is basically um, an introductory chapter where I go into the history of the fourth dimension of mathematics, religion, philosophy, and art from antiquity to the present. So here I took some little screen grabs of some famous pic figures that I go over in that section. Um, in the 4DI, I basically explain using geometry what the fourth dimension is and how to visualize it analogically. And then we go a little deeper in space-time sausage. We talk about the basics of um, block universe theory, and I explain how if you extend a human subject through time, you get a 4D hypersubject, or what I call a space-time sausage. A slice of the space-time sausage would be whoever you are at any given moment in time. And the sausage itself is, of course, you um, over the course of your entire life. In Zeno's Arrow, we go over the famous... Zeno's paradox, which basically shows that slicing time into individual moments is always arbitrary. We also try to imagine what a durationless moment would look like. In the moving present, we discuss Minkowski space-time and apply it to film. This lays the groundwork for the following chapter, Book as Block Universe. In this chapter, this is basically the meat of my argument, although I have a few other chapters that really do some heavy lifting later on. Um, in this chapter, I show how comics themselves can be seen as block universes, where panels or even pages can be seen as slices of the greater whole, the book itself. 
I also explain how a book or a reel of film is technically a 4D hyper object with the movement of the eye controlling the fourth dimension, time, and the thickness of the book or reel comprising the other three dimensions. While each panel or page is the present while you're reading it, the block universe of the book itself exists with the past, present, and future occurring all simultaneously. In Autobio is Sausage, I return to the notion of the space-time sausage and argue that autobiographical comics make a 4D hyper-object of their author's life. And the image there, actually, those are all of my books that I've written um, since I'm an autobiographical comics artist. In Book as Brain, B-R-A-N-E, um, I look into comics as a multiples medium, given the printing project process, and apply it to modern string theory, um, hence Albert Einstein in the corner there. Uh, I then use string theory to examine Marvel and DC comics and their use of multiple universes, which begs the question if multiple universe theory is baked into the medium of comics itself by its very design. And finally, in the corkscrew block universe, I grapple with some arguments against block universe theory. I take a look at how ancient agrarian peoples figured cycles of time and see how we can address this naturalistic notion of time using block universe theory. I show how we can embrace things like the moving present and the feeling of time passing subjectively within four-dimensionalism by viewing the block universe as a corkscrew containing infinite cycles of time forever moving forward in a circular motion. I use Nietzsche's notion of the eternal return to dispel worries about fatalism and conclude that to embrace block universe theory positively, we should take Nietzsche's suggestion to love our fate or his notion of amor fati. So those nine chapters basically make up the entire website. Sorry, there are some spoilers in there, but of course you can go online, read all of it right now, and get all every last single tiny detail and enjoy my fun drawings. So yeah, that's actually the the header of my homepage, 4dtime.space. Um, so yeah, I'll take a little moment and I'll take you over to the website and we can start scrolling around. All right, so here we are at my website. That's me wearing some kooky 3D glasses. Right here we've got a little blurb, got an introduction. Here, I'll click that just so you can see it. So this, this one you actually read going in this direction. It's basically, it's an introduction, as I said, um, going over why I wanted to write it and what really inspired me. Here are the modules that I was talking about. Um, I'll show you, well, let's see. Let's do the 4DI because it has Carl Sagan in it. I love Carl Sagan. So this is the 4DI where I go over the basics of four-dimensionalism. There's a hypercube. There's a fun stereogram. Um, oh yeah, another cool thing is that you can actually click different elements um, within the comic and they'll take you um, to different outside sources. So let's see, there's me visualizing the fourth dimension there. There's Carl Sagan, uh, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you click on this link, it'll actually take you to the episode, The Edge of Forever on YouTube, which um, this still is from. Pretty cool. So yeah, and then you can either hit Next or Home. So I'll show you what Next looks like. It just loads the next page. This is Space Time Sausage. This page is actually pretty long. There's The Worm. There's Donnie Darko. Oh yeah, and you can click that and then it takes you to a little video. But anyways, um, let's just go all the way down. This one's really long. Okay. So yeah, that's the home page. Um, we also have some extra goodies down here. Sitemap bibliography, of course, important. Credits about me. And then if you click on this, this is actually um, a version of a zine that I made that I released with the comic or with the website, rather. I released it as a print version and it shows... Um, this is more autobiographical, actually. It shows my own experiences with um, dealing with the philosophy of time growing up and how that inspired me to make this work. All right, so that concludes my little presentation. Uh, thank you again so much for inviting me, ICAF, to be a part of this. Um, thank you to my other panelists. I really look forward to our discussion. And um, thank you our audience, whoever is listening right now, I hope you check out the website and check out the other speakers that are part of.